All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, astrophotographers especially. I wanted to talk about high dynamic range compositions. Um, I see a lot of them done very poorly, and it's unfortunate because it's, you know, I think it, it deters a lot of people. It, you know, it looks like, I don't know how to how to describe the way bad HDR looks. It just looks really granular. Like, I don't know. Like you like somebody spray painted the image on Rice Krispies or something. It, I I don't know. It, it, bad HDR looks terrible. But I wanted to create an image of M42 in which I brought out a lot of the you know the nebula, the glowing nebulosity and still resolved at least the four main stars of the trapezium. Um, so I did two different sets of exposures. I did about 155 second exposures to resolve the trapezium, and I did about two hours worth of four minute exposures to pull out more dust. And what you do is, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you know how to integrate you know images but you you'll stack those individually you'll make a five second in, in my example I made a five second stack and a four minute stack and it is important when you're doing this make sure you're on standard mode here because that will preserve the relative geometry of the image and keep any weird stretching from happening you know if you do intersection mode some strange things can happen with how Deep Sky Stacker decides to stack it. So you'll want to do standard mode and then just stack it normally with I didn't use I didn't even bother with darks on the five second exposures because it was such a short exposure. But just you know stack them normally. And then you'll have you know your your TIFF file, your five seconds, your short uh, stack and your longer stack. And I'm going to do this in PixInsight. If I get requests, I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop. But PixInsight handles this pretty brilliantly, so I just will do it in PixInsight. Now, before you can get started, you will need to... I've already done that. I've already done it to these, but just give them an initial, you know, a mild stretch. This is my long trapezium and this is my short trapezium and you can see the, the, the stars are nicely resolved in the trapezium you can almost make out these out the, the fifth and sixth stars here but anyways nicely resolved here uh, the first thing I did was just give them a stretch so intensity transformation to open up screen transfer function and histogram transformation um, clicked on one unlinked did an automatic stretch brought that over to the histogram to transfer that stretch over to the histogram transformation and then applied the histogram transformation to the images to give them their stretches and then Okay, after they, they have a, a little a homogeneous little stretch applied to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go tell us when it's your turn. Then after they have a homogeneous stretch applied, what you, the next important step is to get their size and geometry correct. Because you can see when Deep Sky Stacker does it, depending on its reference frame, they're not going to be exactly on top of each other. So we're going to use, go to image registration, dynamic alignment. Set this one to your first image, that one to our second image. Now my stars are huge because I'm at 2800 millimeters with a DSLR. Um, so I always have to increase the search radius to, you know, 20. And now you'll just click on your stars in your reference frame and it will 
try to find them in your target frame and hopefully you can find them so just go around and select some stars all over your image see that one's too big it didn't go let me try a more accurate click on it no nope, still not going to go and make sure you know give it a sanity check keep an eye on your on your target image and make sure it's actually clicking on them no good okay but go ahead and click on all your stars and then hit execute now that will produce an image no no you can't not right now it's almost bedtime so after you click the check mark on dynamic alignment it will produce an aligned image now you can see it's like right well boy that doesn't look good it missed quite a bit let's try that again yeah look the you know what it, it must have I'm, it must have had a star wrong in the middle to transfer it over like that okay let's uh, let's do it again here so there's our auto save open up that's our bright one this is our dim one yeah it must have uh, yeah I mean you got you got to keep an eye on this stuff because you can uh, you know if I didn't go and check that then I'd try to do the HDR and it would look terrible and I might not know why But yeah, it may have uh, misselected a star or put a star off in the middle of nowhere there. Maybe I just won't do so many stars. And make sure they are all the same here. That's right. Okay, let's try that. All those stars were correct. Okay, how does this one look? Okay, much better. Yeah, it uh, it must have picked the wrong star there. But anyways, okay, now, now you've got your uh, short stack registered to your long stack, and depending on how far apart they were, you are probably gonna have a border on one side of it, and I always just crop that off. I give them I, I crop them to the same uh, to the same size so I go dynamic crop and then I grab the one that's got the border these are already cropped so it doesn't so you, you can't see what I'm what the you know the end effect is but I crop off the border wherever the border is and then we, we then apply that dynamic crop to the to the one where we don't have the uh, interface aligned to and then that'll crop this one and then you hit the check mark and it'll crop the other one now they are both have the exact same 
dimensions and the exact same alignment. So those are perfect and ready to go. Um, I'm not going to bother saving because I already did those. Um, so now, now that you've you've got them cropped, aligned, you save them, save those files, and then we'll go into all processes. And now we're ready for the uh, HDR composition. Add our prepared our processed images. And I know I've never messed around with these. I should learn what all these do. Defines the amount of low pass filtering to smooth the edges. I don't know. It's always worked with the default settings. I'm sure I could tweak it for better results. But anyways, um, you just load your files up. Dad, yeah. Can you get me a drink, please? Yeah, hang on a second, honey. I'll be right there. All right, so HDR composition did its thing. And I don't know if it looks like much to you out there, but the, uh, the dark regions obviously have a lot more detail in them. Let's open up our original uh, our original five second stack and you can see there's just the dynamic range is just not there with this. Um, you know yeah out in out in the dark cloudy areas it's it's much brighter and we will not, we would, without the, uh, the HDR composition, we would not be able to pull as much detail out of this as we will after, you know, combining those longer exposures in with this. And, uh, you know, from this point, it's just a matter of your normal image processing, just stretching, um, masking and stretching, masking and stretching. It's, uh, all there is to it now. I'll do a little bit here. So range selection, intensity transformation, curves transformation. So just apply gentle stretches. Yeah, that looks good. But anyways, I've already done one of these. I finished it up. And I'm not going to go through the whole process with you. But... You know, this was my finished product with it. You can see how much dust we were able to pull out. And, you know, it came out really nicely. All, all this stuff up in here, we would not have been able to pull this out in the, with, you know, with those five second exposures. It, so we were able to have the, uh, the, you know, the resolved stars of the trapezium and you know the fainter nebulosity and dust around here and uh I, I think it just looks a lot better than we'd be able to do with a single level of exposure and just careful processing all right so that's the gist of it like i said if you want a photoshop tutorial on this we could i could just leave comments 
and uh, I'll do a Photoshop one. But yeah, Chris guys, everybody, I'm gonna play with this a little more and see if I can get a better version of it. <laughs> 